This is the Jack the Ripper of all pesticides. Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? My name is Ashley. I'm a soil scientist by formal education with a minor in plant science. And on this channel, we look at old wives tales, Facebook tips and tricks, and Instagram secrets. And we put them to the test to see if they actually work. And we use a little bit of science to do it. And in some cases, we actually introduce completely new theories on gardening and some better ways of doing things. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and join our awesome crew here on Gardening in Canada. We are looking at diatomaceous earth. And on this video, we are actually going to be looking at what exactly is diatomaceous or how we use it in the garden. Is it safe for pets, animals, and ourselves? And then number four, how to use this. If you are looking for information on diatomaceous earth and pollinators or earthworms, be sure to check out my other video that I also released today. I released both at the same time because I didn't want there to be any controversy or misinformation floating around. So first of all, what is this? This is actually fossilized diatoms. So it is technically fossils that have been crushed up into a fine powder. This powder acts very similar to chalk and it actually acts the same way on your hands. So when you put it in your hands, it does not cause irritation. That is a complete myth. It just simply dries your hands out. That is it. That is all folks. When you are looking to buy some for your garden, you want to make sure you're getting food grade, garden grade, or house grade diatomaceous earth. The reason being is that there are pool filtration systems that use diatomaceous earth and that may contain chlorine and that is obviously not good for your plants. So when we look at what diatomaceous earth does, it actually comes down to the secret of what it looks like under a microscope. It acts very similar to clay particles in the soil. It is very, very tiny micro particles that kind of look like shards of glass. Those shards of glass actually cut the exoskeleton of your pest and therefore dehydrate the exoskeleton which ultimately leads to the death of your pest. It is completely organic because it is technically a substrate or a soil so there is no chemicals involved in diatomaceous earth. Now the question is it safe for humans and animals? Well we've already went through the fact that you can put it on your hands and the worst it's going to do is it's going to feel a little bit dry similar to if you were playing with chalk all day. However if you breathe it in it may cause an irritation similar to if you were to breathe in a dust cloud, a bag of flour, or grain dust, if anyone's ever experienced that, is going to cause the same effect. It is not going to cut your lungs up into a million pieces, but it will cause you some discomfort. So if you have sensitive lungs, then I suggest using a mask. When it comes to animals, it is actually used to get rid of fleas and bugs in a lot of cases. And you can ask people who have chickens, they usually have roll baths or dust baths. Chinchillas have dust baths and there's diatomaceous earth in that dust. That dust helps get rid of the bugs that actually cause the itch for the animals. Now when it comes to use, what I like to do is I like to just put it on the soil when it comes to outdoor plants because if we put it on leaves and flowers, we are actually targeting all winged exoskeleton creatures, which yes, that does include bumblebees. So when it comes to outdoor plants, you simply just need to sprinkle this in the soil. I sprinkle it on the top and then I just gently mix it in to the subsurface soil. I do not mix it all the way through. I did recommend to a friend to mix it through the entire profile, but that is because she had an ant problem in her potted plants. So what she did is she emptied an entire container of this into a swimming pool potting soil and it cured her issue. When it comes to indoor plants, because you obviously do not have bumblebees in your home and if you do, you should let them out into the outdoors, you can put this on the leaves and flowers because you do not have to worry about killing your winged creatures. So it is useful for aphids. When you do put it in the soil, you do not have to worry. You will kill a majority of your pests because A, they get to your plant through the soil, walking through the soil. They hatch their eggs in the soil and sometimes they even find their homes in your soil. I hope you found this helpful about diatomaceous earth. I hope it answered all your questions. If you have any other questions when it comes to diatomaceous earth, be sure to leave those down in the comments below and I will get to every single one of your comments and give you an answer. Do not be scared of this stuff. It is not deadly. It is not 
going to hurt your cats or any squirrels in your backyard. It is completely eco-friendly and it is a great tool to use. Oh hey there, are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.